Is completing the Return of the Founders challenges worth it? A cross-eyed video by Dangerously Incompetent. Over the last week or so, unless you are a complete bloodthirsty fiend for battle hunger for death and blood and gore and the teeth and you, all you've got eyes for is battle, 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 you may have noticed this small icon over here. Return of the Founders. Welcome to the first crossout season. Return of the Founders. Complete season's challenges and earn new parts and blueprints. There are challenges to complete and there are rewards for completing those challenges. Is it worth it? Let us ponder. First, the simple case. Have you bought a battle pass? Either the basic battle pass, 9.99 euros, or the elite battle pass, 34.99 euros. If the answer is yes, then if you don't complete the challenges, then you've thrown your money away. Unless you spent the money wanting to support the game. If you haven't bought a battle pass, is it worth it? Well, let's have consider the rewards for completing these challenges. Ignore all the stuff with the padlocks, because only the people with battle passes get them, like... Uh, free fused up versions of the weapons and other parts, a few cosmetic icons and a few cosmetics for your uh, some coins and some cosmetics for your rye to make it unique and flash your cash. But without the battle pass, the only thing you get, well you get two things, you get structural parts and there are quite a few of these and more a wider selection of structural parts is on that, uh, is no, that's uh, there. We are, is always welcome. There's quite a few, and blueprints. There are blueprints for all the new founders' wheels and radars and wheels and legs and cabin, the new cab omnibox cabin, and more weapons and oh legendary weapons and um, what is the piece de resistance a legendary oh, no hang about a legendary drone but that's that's just a legend ah there we go a blueprint for a legendary drone that's the best you can get without the battle pass and once you've unlocked these uh, blueprints you can go to the founders faction Go to crafting and then you can make them yourself for fun and profit. I mean, you won't get as much profit as the people with battle passes because they'll have made them like a week or so in advance and got the best prices for them. But you still could sell, make and sell them for a profit or you can just craft them for yourself and you'll get, be, they'll probably still be cheaper than you get on the market for a, little, for, for a good few weeks, months or so. So you could save yourself some money there and oh, off you go. These founders crafting recipes are going to be particularly useful to new pla newer players who are keen to up the power score of their builds because you can craft specials, weapons, and special tires and epic weapons, epic leg tires, epic cabin, more epic weapons, legendary weapons without having to do all the faff of leveling up your reputation in the existing factions. So you can move ahead economic well, weapons wise, parts wise through the game quicker if you are that way inclined. What is it that we have to do to receive these marvellous rewards? Well if we look at the challenges tab and then the seasonal challenges on the challenges tab we get daily challenges, weekly challenges and additional weekly challenges. Starting with the daily challenges. Every day there are five new challenges for you to complete. They have to be done sequentially, and there's winning missions one time, and winning missions two times. Well, that's simple, you know how to do that. Then there's patches, there's gain three patches, or five patches, gain five patches, or gain eight patches for the fifth challenge, daily challenge, from missions, weapons, and raids. The patches are those things that turn up on your battle results screen and they also turn up in your patches tab on your, your account about you. So mission patches, things like Invader, win an assault battle without being destroyed. 
First Blood. Be the first to destroy enemy in missions. MVP from the grave. Destroy enemies in missions whilst dead. And that's the rate. missions ones. And there's ones for the weapons. For whatever weapon you're using, there's a patch for it. All you have to do is use the weapon to destroy or help destroy enemies with a rare shotgun for this one in mission. So whatever weapon you've got, yeah, there'll be a patch for it. You just have to destroy enemies. And then there's raids, patches, uh, destroy or help destroy lunatic raiders in easy raids. But you have to do it several times before you catch hold of it. So you need to do it 80 times, eight, destroy 80 raiders before you get this patch once. But there are all sorts of patches for all sorts of things. And basically, all you have to do is play missions or raids, and these patches rock up sooner or later. Uh, my experience of it so far is like within an hour or two of playing missions or raids, you'll have completed all the daily challenges because you'll have got the patches, you'll have got the win one time. And remember, you have to do it in sequence, which is a bit annoying, but easy enough, simple, and not too much hassle. Now let's look at the weekly challenges. Last week there was Craft a Rare, 5,000 machine gun damage, while well, I did that in one easy raid with cords. Destroy 20 enemies in a normal raid. Get the wires, 10 wins, 5,000 auto cannon damage. Get the patch, win a patch, which is winning 10 raids. Um, all easy enough for an experienced player, but you're having to qualify for these challenges, which newer players might struggle with. You need 4,000 power score vehicle to get into a normal raid and then you need an auto cannon to do auto cannon damage. Easy enough for an experienced player. I've, I've got a uh, rapier or I just buy a rapier for 30 coin or 40 coin or whatever it is and off we go. Sooner or later you can do it. But for for newer players, starting to get might get a bit tricky in places, but still doable, still doable. Then additional weekly challenges. Now these are, are starting to get more tricky. Earn the patch MVP three times. So you've got to win and be top of your team three times. That might take a bit of doing. Or what's the other word? Destroy or help destroy five leaders in raids using plasma emitters. While well, I grabbed my synthesis slapped them on my raid build rammed off into easy raids five easy raids later i'd made sure well actually six because on one of them the other swine in the in the battle my other team members raced off and killed the leader before i could get to him swine so i had to do it again six times ah oh. But again, you're having, having to qualify for this and they're starting to get a lot trickier. And there is, this is just the second week of Founders. There is the possibility they'll get harder and harder and harder as time goes on. And uh, you, the, the qualifications will come. Instead of a plasma emitter, you might need a legendary plasma emitter. Is there a legendary plasma? Or a legendary plasma cannon. I know there's a legendary plasma cannon. Anyway. They're all there, they're all doable for an experienced player, maybe a little bit tricky for a starting player, as I said. How long is it going to take you to complete these challenges? That's going to depend on how well you're doing in your battles. I mean, you've got to have to win some battles, you've got to get MVP some battles, and you've got to get these patches. It all depends on how well you're doing, so it's a bit hard to say. But to give you a, a ballpark figure, a rough idea of how long, on Monday I completed all the dailies, all the, f the five dailies and all the weeklies and all the additional weeklies in under three hours. Now how many times are you going to have to complete all these challenges in order to unlock everything all the way up until that legendary drone? Well you get two and a half thousand XP from your daily challenges and you get 28,000 XP from completing your weekly challenges and 6,000 from the additional weekly challenges which gives you if you average out over a seven day week uh, 7,357 XP per day now you need to complete get everything there are 75 levels and so far 
each level has required 5,000 experience points. Assuming each level continues to need 5,000 experience points, then you only need to complete, ev uh, complete your day's share of dailies, weeklies and additional weeklies 50 days out of the 75. So not too bad, but you've got to play quite a bit. Like two out of three days you, you need to play and complete. So that is a fair chunk of time, especially if you're you know, married, kids, job, schoolwork, all that other stuff, all, and sleeping and eating and all that other stuff getting in the way. Ta. But still, eminently doable if you're a keen cross out player. Overall, I'd say the challenges are not particularly difficult to complete, and most of them you'll complete them just by, simply by playing the way you regularly do. Occasionally you will have to do a specific battle with a specific weapon or something, but unless you're a really new player who's struggling to qualify for the challenges, they're not difficult, they're not hugely time consuming. So yeah, not so difficult. And the rewards, they're nice to have, they're not essential, but they are nice to have, so I would say yes, it is worth completing the Return of the Founders challenges, especially as it will get you to play Crossout more. If you don't have the time or can't qualify to complete challenges, don't sweat it. You only lose out on the few structural parts and you've got lots of them from the other factions and you lose out on crafting founders parts. But if you really want that particular founders part, a few weeks after it's been unlocked by other players, some enough people will be selling them on the market that you'll be able to buy them for near the resource cost so you won't lose out too much. And at the end of the day, the devs have said that after the event is finished, there will be a way to get all the stuff, get all the parts, but they haven't decided what it is yet. That's it for this video. Hope it's been useful to you. This is Dangerously Incompetent saying good night and good survivability survivors.